Hi, my name is Dr. Padilla. I'm a professor in computer science and psychology. I've been a professor for over five years now. Today, I have the great pleasure of interviewing three PhD students that are first year PhD students at Harvard, MIT, and Northeastern. And I am asking them questions about the PhD application process. So many of you have been asking me questions about the PhD application process, and I thought it'd be great to get perspectives from three individuals who were very successful in terms of their applications. So I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ella Hugi. I'm from California, and I'm a first-year PhD student at Harvard. What motivated you to apply to PhD programs? Yeah, so after undergrad, I really just felt like I wasn't done learning. I felt like I just started to get into the technical depth that I wanted to within my classes. And so I was considering graduate school options, in which case I was considering both master's and PhD. Um, I considered the funding cost of a master's versus a PhD. A PhD is funded, at least in the US. And so I decided to go with a PhD, given that I already had research experience and I really enjoyed doing research. How did you decide where to apply and how many schools did you end up applying to? So I had kind of two different routes of picking schools. I looked at conference websites and I looked at all the schools that were publishing the kind of work that I was really interested in and I accumulated all those schools and the specific lab and faculty. And then I also just had kind of a list of schools that I was interested in and were in locations I really cared about. And then I looked at the overlap kind of between those two lists and that's how I narrowed down to 12 schools, which I generally think is on the higher end, but I am really glad that I applied to that many. What was the most challenging part of the application process? The most challenging part for me was just synthesizing all the new information. And so learning about all the people in the field and the work that was being done and the different labs. And so kind of learning this, but also remembering all of it as I wrote my applications was pretty challenging. How did you approach writing your statement of purpose? So for my statement of purpose, I kind of just went chronologically through my academic journey from my first year of undergrad. I felt this kind of gave some perspective into how my interests had shifted over time and got me to where I was today. And also I connected kind of all my different experiences, changing my major, different internships to the research fit and question that I wanted to answer uh, in my applications. Looking back, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? Overall, I'm pretty happy with my application process, but I do think getting oriented on the field that I'm in earlier in my undergrad would have been really helpful. Granted, I didn't know that I wanted to do a PhD super early on. Um, I still think this would have made the workload during my application much lighter. Was there any advice that you received that turned out to be especially helpful? Yeah, the piece of advice I received the most was that your reference letters are most important, and I definitely think this is the case. I think being a PhD student is really just about being an independent researcher, and your grades, extracurriculars, internships, etc. can't convey that like a reference letter could. And so getting some research experience in undergrad and having someone who can vouch for your research experience is really important. What advice would you give to someone applying to PhD programs right now? I would say cast your net really wide. There's a lot of factors that you can't control. And even if you would have been admitted one year, you may not this year due to funding, cohort sizes, your advisor could be on sabbatical, et cetera. And so just give yourself the best chance for success. Hi, my name is Kai. I'm a first year student at Northeastern. What motivated you to apply to PhD programs? Yeah, I did some research in a fifth year master's program at UW, and that really made me inspired to continue doing research, and the best way to do that was through a PhD. Uh, I was also interested in a lot of different topics at the time, and I didn't think that I'd be able to pursue them in industry. How did you decide where to apply, and how many schools did you end up applying to? Um, I talked to one of the professors at my school who was working in visualization, who like I TA'd for, and I knew them pretty well uh, because I had no experience with visualization before applying. And they gave me a list of different programs and people that they recommended I applied for. So that was super helpful. I also just Googled around seeing who was out there. Uh, and based on that, I applied for 14 schools, 17 programs. So I also cast a wide net. What was the most challenging part of the application process? Uh, <laughs> I think writing the research statement was the most challenging. It took the most mental effort. Um, doing interviews was more stressful in the moment, 
Like it was more nerve wracking, but I think definitely writing was the hardest for me. How did you approach writing your statement of purpose? I got a group together. Um, it was me and three other students. We met at a conference earlier and then we all kind of met once a week and we like iterated on our statement a bunch of times. I also got feedback from, I think, two professors, and that was also really helpful. Another good resource is a database online called cssoft.org, or it's a Notion site, uh, and that has a bunch of different research statements from past students. Um, it's like a, a database, and I compared my statement to a bunch of those before I started writing. Okay, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I, I looked at a lot of the statements there before I started writing mine. Looking back, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? Yeah, I think I wrote the best statement that I could, but I could have definitely improved on the interviews. I kind of just prepared very lightly and I was judging like the program and the advisor based on vibes a little bit too much, I think. Um, which is good because you want a good fit with your research advisor, but also I wish I had talked to more people about how to do interviews well and really had the best interview experience I could have. Was there any advice that you received that turned out to be especially helpful? Yeah, so definitely the advice, the recommendations of where to apply from that one professor, and also just what to expect in a PhD and a Viz PhD in general. That was super helpful. I've had a lot of great mentors over the years who have kind of told me what to expect throughout the PhD process. Definitely start early. I think that's common advice. It took me a few months to write my statement and I think that's pretty common. You can even start like years before if you're feeling really ambitious. Just have some ideas if you're like set on applying to PhD programs. Um, but not everyone is set on applying to PhD programs and that's fine too. Definitely find a group of people who is also applying if that's easy to do. That helped me a lot. It makes it less isolating too, which is really good because the process is so stressful like you want a cohort to go th through it with. Hi, I'm Arna Verma. Uh, I'm a first year PhD student at MIT. What motivated you to apply to PhD programs? Originally, I was really interested in visualization research, um, but as I uh, quickly got into it, I realized I really like studying the people part of visualization research. Um, and so when I was first doing my first experiment, I was like, how do people work? I want to know more. And that's not something that you can find in the industry or a lot of jobs in the industry to do. So that kind of motivated me to apply to PhD programs where things are more flexible and I can propose studying how people's brains work. Uh, with visualization design. How did you decide where to apply and how many schools did you end up applying to? Yeah, so I applied to four schools and I think I decided on where to apply based on um, the research interests of the faculty there. And I think I was really motivated both not just by the faculty I was applying to, but the whole range of other faculty at the school I could be working with. And, you know, I would say the city did play a big factor as well. I really like being in a city with a lot of colleges, with a lot of collaborators. Um, so I think that played into it as well. What was the most challenging part of the application process? For me, the most challenging part was just getting my SOP ready, um, which is the statement of purpose, which is describing what you want to do in grad school. I think that collecting your ideas into a cohesive statement um, is really difficult and takes a lot of iterations. Um, and originally, I didn't know what I want to even study. How do I even come about studying this? topic, but I think as cheesy as it is to say, I just thought about it really, really hard and worked on it a million different times. And then the more I thought about it, the more excited I got. And so I kept thinking and I kept thinking. And um, I guess that's how uh, that was kind of like the most challenging part was just even r deciding on what I want to do. How did you approach writing your statement of purpose? I think um, originally I had some keywords that I really liked, like visualization, HCI, cognitive science, and maybe some sub-disciplines. So like things like communication and visual understanding and reasoning. But I think as I kind of thought about them a little bit harder, um, I think the vague ideas in my head started becoming really clearer. I tried to reach out to people who I know who studied in those fields. So for example, there were postdocs 
um, at the lab I was working at, uh, which really helped me think through ideas on what it means to even write a research statement. Um, I think having like a specific goal in mind is a bit hard. So for what I want to study, how people understand and communicate with visualizations and visual information, I think I had some lofty goals, but then I think as I read the literature more, I think it refined what my ideas were in that statement. I think the biggest thing is just like iteration, iteration, iteration. <laughs> Yeah. Looking back, is there anything you wish you would have done differently? I think I would have gotten feedback sooner and I would have started pitching my ideas to people sooner. I think I was so afraid that people would judge me because I didn't know what I was talking about. And I just wanted to just do research in this area that I only knew the words of, but I was scared that like, wow, do I really know what reasoning is? Do I really know what visual understanding is what are visualizations um i was so scared that like i didn't know everything about everything that i think i was a bit paralyzed at the beginning but i think it's just it was so helpful and so insightful to talk to different faculty different students even like my friends um who are just like you know not doing research they continually ask me like oh what did you mean by that and i think you yourself can ask those questions, but I think when other people ask those questions, it's like a light bulb moment that goes on. That's like, what did I mean by those words? And I think you continually keep asking yourself that, and then eventually it'll come out a clear research statement. So, Was there any advice that you received that turned out to be especially helpful? The most helpful advice I received was to, um, I guess, both look at and read the research of the folks that I was applying to, so the different faculty members, but also kind of develop my own direction and um, not just work on like whatever other people are working on. Um, so I think there's a good mix of balance. That advice was the most helpful because before when I first started, I would try to fit in my research statement onto like existing lines of work like this person is working on x so i have to work on x because they're clearly so much more knowledgeable than me yeah it was good to understand that like you have your own ideas as well and you can bring forward those own ideas and like other people might be thinking about those ideas as well but they might not just be doing research but they really want to and that's kind of one thing that i got over and over it's like wow i was Every time I talk to someone, they're like, I haven't written any papers on it, but I was thinking just what you were thinking. And like, we'd have a really fun time talking together. So I think that's kind of the key and the most helpful advice that I got um, was to blend your ideas and other people's ideas together. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone applying to PhD programs right now? I would say try to get familiar with what research questions that you're asking. I think it can be tempting, uh, especially if you've like done existing research before to just get trapped in like saying a few key words and like just concatenating them together and like shipping them out and saying like, and trying to say like how it would like impact the world or impact the research community. I think what it means to develop a research question is really, or to me in my, through my process is what I learned, is to really ask like, why would this thing happen, right? Like, why would we care? Um, and it's really investigating, like, it's not just the impact or like using these big terms, but rather like trying to get into the details of like, what makes sense? Why does it make sense to study? What, why haven't other people studied it, right? There's clearly like thousands of researchers, you know, all working in this area. Like what's new, what's interesting that hasn't been like um, answered before? And like, why hasn't it ans been answered before? And like, I think thinking about it through that lens really helped me out. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this type of video useful, definitely hit the like and subscribe for more content on academic success. I really found it so interesting to see the different perspectives on how many places they apply to, how they prioritize different information, and what they would do differently moving forward. Academia can be tough, but you don't have to go through it alone. Keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.